Thank you for <coughs> the invitation. Um, and thank you for your introduction, Tim. I think it was really a wonderful step stone for some of the things I would like to carry on discussing. Um, I would like to start saying that I find the theme of this conference highly interesting and um, I've been working with a related subject for some time, so I'm really very much looking forward to listening to the contributors and to having, hopefully, uh, some response to mine. As Tim said, my point of departure is landscape architecture. And um, I know your focus is mainly architecture, but hopefully I uh, can bring in some themes and some um, parallels that makes you more aware of what you are standing in the midst of. Um, I have an interest in the phenomenon of leftover industrial areas. And I must say, I'm not interested in the top of the iceberg, so to speak, uh, with all the buildings worth of preservation from traditional heritage point of view. So I'm not going to present um, uh, any considerations of what is worth uh, of preservation. My focus is on the huge amount of leftovers beneath the sea surface, so to speak, where we really um, can discuss uh, how to value if value at all. In many ways, the presence of the leftover uh, industrial areas have contributed to a shift of paradigm in the ways that we got the city, and hence our ideas of the urban, of planning and of landscape. And the shift of perception is definitely also taking place within design, which will be my main focus of today. By naming a process of change transformation, I refer to a situation when something is changed from one state to another, even though this something neither before nor after is perceived as something static. My point is that this something becomes something else, and uh, that before and after are related. And that is why transformation is closely linked to the uh, existing, to the as found, and hence the reason why the whole range of themes concerning preservation indirectly is involved in these discussions, as well as the question about the relation between the past, the present, and the future. However, the theory of transformation is amazing this past, despite the fact that the main part of future architectural work will have to deal with transformation of the existing built stock, and despite the fact that we actually have a long tradition uh, for altering. Landscape architects have a long tradition for interpreting landscape, but the industrially influenced and constituted sites and their call for design as intervention challenge the conceptual framework of both landscape and urbanism. The severe interest in what is already there is questioning the notion of site in terms of specificity and capacity of grasping all aspects that might be associated with the existing. Even though the above definition of transformation may seem well known, it differs fundamentally from the basis of which architecture has been grounded since the Renaissance and hence from traditional design practice as it had been understood throughout the main part of the 20th century. My contribution today is a reflection on how we design uh, with what is already there under the headline design as intervention. But before presenting a number of intervention or editing strategies, I'll reflect a bit on why it is important uh, or of the sense in the making. Then I'll characterize uh, the art of transformation by outlining what distinguishes uh, transformation from traditional design and finally list some of the basic problem uh, complexes that it touches upon. The situations vary a lot, and I'm not looking for universal solutions for apparently similar uh, situations, situations either. However, there are some common features when it comes to the sense of the making. One of the main challenges of the transformation of industrial lift over areas is to integrate these areas into the urban fabric. This means that they both need to be extracted from their original ream of production and to find a way of legitimizing um, their presence as part of the urban sphere. So we have to find ways to get them culturally accepted and to adapt them, into, uh, adapt them to new functions. In the 80s, 
planners thought that the previous functions could just be replaced by new ones. But today we have recognized that the main challenge is to find ways of integrating these areas. They are seldom integrated because they fulfill <coughs> a predefined need, but because we cannot afford not to integrate them. So the need is not necessarily there from the very beginning. We must invent it along with the reinterpretation. This, is, this also implies a request for appropriation in two ways. The architect will have to make them appropriable and enable um, this process. The intention influence both the program of these sites and the reconnection with the cities. There are no predefined programs to superimpose on the site, which challenge the traditional urban design uh, site program um, relationship. Instead, we have to invent the program on behalf of what is there and what it possibly, possibly can become. Industrial production areas are not part of the public realm, and literally they have been fenced off uh, to the public. The linkage to the urban network only takes place by industrially oriented infrastructure like waterways, railways and nowadays driveways. So they need to be opened or in other terms the must, uh, borders must be renegotiated and the site needs additional infrastructure, both in the way that it is connected to the urban fabric and in the way that the site itself is uh, organized. Industrial production is seldom clean, and their leftovers often do not match nowadays ecological standards. And this issue must be addressed while at the same time the reintegration of a unique opportunity to rethink the overall green infrastructures and flows. Not just in a traditional sense, meaning in terms of mobility as mentioned before, but also regarding flows and the role of nature in the current borderless city. Um, there's an ocean between design as, a, as creating something from scratch and design as altering something already existing. Even though we are dealing with transformation, our approaches, tools and means are, however, related to the former version. So the following description will serve to outline the points of distinctions while at the same time recognizing that none of these practices exist in pure form and then they are hence both reflected in landscape architecture. Design is a noun defined as a specification of an object, manifested by an agent intended to accomplish goals in a particular environment using a set of primitive components, satisfying a set of requirements and subject to constraints. As a verb, it is to create design in an environment where designers operate. Exactly this specification of an object is, an import, is important since architects and in casual landscape architects and urban designers, due to the size and the complexity of their design object, uh, will have to specify the object through another medium, which <coughs> often happens to be the drawing. This media is remote from the site itself in terms of both character scale and geographer. And as noted by Walter Benjamin, Architectural drawings, they do not reproduce architecture, rather they produce it in the first place. So it's interesting to note the connection between the drawing and design, as Tim also introduced. Um, in Italian drawing <coughs> uh, is named disegno, and in the 16th century Italy, disegno was considered a mind work. The drawing was at that time regarded as a mirror of the ideas or the concept as it was created in the mind and expressed through the hand. This is also why the sketch reaches a special status as something very related to invention or inspiration. The drawing as design is a concern that focuses on the conceptual aspects of the artistic process as a predominant intellectual activity. Designing is a process of becoming, which is steaming from the intellect and manifested on the white paper. The way that is, this is done is not compulsory, but is part of a creative process itself. And this process is indeed very institutionalized, or um, put into system, as Tim put it. And once again, we, it's quite interesting to turn to 16th century Rome again 
When the architect Raphael took over the responsibility of finishing uh, St. Peter's Church in Rome, he uh, at a time between 1510 and 1520 uh, wrote a letter to the current Pope, Leo uh, X, giving advices for how any architectural project should be represented. He suggests a system consisting of three interrelated forms, a plan and what he calls an external and an internal elevation, meaning a section and a facade. And by doing so, Raphael not only ends an era of experimentation of how to communicate built work, but he also puts into system how buildings should be represented. And furthermore, he indirectly institutionalizes the modes of architectural thinking and production. And this triad, the plan, the section and the facade, still constitutes the backbone of the architectural profession, emphasizing especially the spatial aspects. The triad also constitutes the most important means of representation within landscape architecture. And this is the reason why we have to pay much interest in how we constitute our representation and hence modes of architectural production. Another aspect of the current architectural production is the division of labor. We distinguish between and separate the phases of conception, the production drawings, execution and maintenance. And very often each of these uh, phases is associated with its, with its own workforce. Architectural production from concept to execution is structured according to the principles of uh, industrial production, meaning Fordism. And central to this way of thinking is that the role of the designer is to shape uh, this specified uh, product and to design the process of production as such. And the way of communication is uh, in this organization model is one way, from top down meaning that all knowledge that is have to be present at the very beginning and there's sort of no feedback in this uh, system. <coughs> this, uh, transformation takes its points of departure from the site itself and can be understood as an engagement with its open processes. Design in this context is rooted in um, agricultivation or horticultivation. It is an alteration of what is there by means of intervention and interventions can be designed as additions, subtractions, superimpositions, detournements, etc. And their presence and impact can vary from hardly anything uh, to nearly complete erasure of the existing. The difference between the traditional design and the transformation approach can be described as two uh, points of perspective. One is in and the other one is over and the in I call Daedalus and the Oa I call Icarus. And in each case I distinguish between a way of reading and getting information and a way of interventing, of acting. In the first, the Daedalus or the in situ perspective, um, the Daedalus reading is defined by being there, in the middle, in situ, on site, in eye level. Um, and this kind of perception is haptically uh, defined. You have no idea of the oral connection, like Daedalus in the myth being uh, uh, he uh, being captured, or he built the maze actually, but being captured in a maze. The re reading is corporeal and attached to atmosphere, small or large appearances, uses and processes taking place in both time and space. The dialogue editing takes, like the dialogue reading, its point of departure in the site and in um, the information that the dialogue reading has uh, uh, brought um, uh, forth. This approach is characterized by working directly at and on the site as an object and uh, that all kind of intervention continuously is, direct, is in a direct uh, dialogue with immediately immediate perception. The Dallas uh, approach is a reflective practice building on a continuous exchange between intention, action and evaluation. And all actions constitute the new point of departure for the next action or intervention. Just like the painter at paint to the canvas reflects on the result 
and then carries on adding more paint in an iterated um, loop. The dialed loss approach does not take use of mediations. Only direct and unmediated interventions, which through physical interventions can relate to things, people and ideas an approach parallel to a pre-modern design practice. The Icarus, or the extra C2 approach, <coughs> is a way of practice identical with the use of mediation and representation as we know it from traditional architectural practice, plan, section, facade and perspective. The use of these modes can provide us with a privileged Olympic viewpoint, which is not only allow us to depict waste areas, but also to help establish uh, physical coherences, even on a very large scale. Dealing with transformation of ruinous industrial landscape, we have to include both the dialogues and the Icarus way of getting information and of acting. The two optiques also represent two various visions and alike attitudes. Icarus uh, is visually oriented and uh, representing um, the perspective. It organizes spaces and oral coherences from its Olympic position. Dialos, on the other hand, is haptic oriented, experimentating, shaping and reshaping from a corporate position. These two modes of perception are constantly in a mutual dialogue. For the architect or the desi designer, this implies that he or she constantly will have to move from the side to the drawing table, uh, forth and backwards, constantly verifying hypotheses and challenging predictions, the designers as well as others. The dialogue figure specific um, intervention can provoke reactions that will help adjust the further process. And the interaction between Daedalus and Icarus helps breaking down the traditional distinction between conception and execution and maintenance. And we find transformation processes embedded in the tradition of landscape gardeners and within the vernacular. Um, but the first solely focus on natural aspects like topography, plantation, climate, etc. And the la latter is very diverse and can hardly be said to constitute a theory of its own. Design is not an isolated new conception, but a reading and intervention in what is already there. It may be structures, elements, atmospheres, processes, meanings, etc. All these suggestions indicate uh, the existing uh, as a complex and dynamic situation. Regarded as architecture, this implies that architecture is neither a beginning nor an end. It is a continuation. And as designers, we are having a dialogue, leaving the situation open for appropriation for others to take part. Um, dealing with structures, elements, uh, and especially with atmospheres, process, and meanings also demonstrates that we are way beyond architecture, understood as a monument in the traditional sense. And with the Eber Emscher um, Park, the innovation strategy was the tool uh, per se on various scales. Um, in an urban uh, development perspective, the focus changed. Um, we have seen from an historical perspective, first the centrifugal development constantly moving the urban frontier towards uh, the outskirts, taking in green fields. While step two was a transformation in a, a 1.0 version. Uh, led by the model to take away all what all what, what that was there in order to reach a sort of greenfield situation. And now we see transformation version 2.0 actually in the intervening uh, in the urban fabric. And the architect intervened in the existing complex situation by affecting the parts. <coughs> and by that the whole will be affected and hence uh, changed. The whole is not treated as a unit, but as a sum of parts with mutual and ex uh, external relations. And the relational aspect means um, that what is not changed is changed through the changed, one could say. This relational aspect works on all levels uh, of scale, from the very small, well-defined site to uh, a whole region, which we saw in the Iba Park. Um, 
introducing this understanding into the design discipline of architecture, landscape architecture, and urban design. Uh, Andrea Kahn and Carol Burns define site as a dynamic relational construct. Designers construe and construct site from an exchange between what they see in front of them and what they wish to have there, between ideas from outside, the physical side and inside, that may be disciplinary norms, personal convictions, social ideas, and between the real as observed and the real as defined. But what is a site then, and how to explore it? If in popular language, uh, a site, oh, um, is the ground on which something takes place at a site in the design context is first of all the area um, a designer receives from a client in order to develop or shape it. In this respect, <coughs> it is given and has clear boundaries. However, when starting to explore this site, uh, the designer's interest generally shifts to features that uh, connect the delimited area of intervention with larger systems and the designer's creative act often introduces elements that have an influence beyond the site itself. Kahn and Burns therefore speak of three distinct areas of site. First, the most obvious one um, is uh, the area of control. It corresponds to the site uh, with its property lines. The second is called the area of influence. It comprises system and forces that act upon the site, even if they do not take place within its boundaries. And the third, finally, is the area of effect, defining the domains beyond the given site that are impacted by the design. Transporting this understanding of site into landscape architecture, US American scholar Elizabeth Mayer examines the site thinking King of uh, American landscape architects of pre-modern and post-modern eras. She noticed site reading and editing strategies that confirm how far these landscape architects are from seeing sites as empty canvases. They rather perceive them as existing situations rich of all kind of material and non-material, or full of spaces, nature and history whose latent forms and meanings can be made apparent and palpable through design. Mayer also observes, observes that um, the own personal immersion of the designers into site is crucial to their thinking about the site as a strong conceptual beginning for their design response. With Mayer, one could point out that this partly rational, partly effective site approach questions the division inherent from modernism between a scientific site analysis and a conceptual design act, as the designer tend to synthesize these intellectual movements into one creative act, design as site interpretation and site as program, not surface for uh, program. Can I make this one? go away like that. Okay. As opposed to modernistic architecture and planning produced, producing new buildings and master plans in order to fulfill predefined social needs, ruinous industrial landscapes reframe this question. It's not a question of how to uh, articulate a predefined program on a given site. The question is how we can use these leftovers and with a slight detournement of Sullivan's dictum that form follows functions. Function, the new premise can be described as function follows form. The lack of a need to fulfill and the quest of uh, legitimating the site is a programmatic challenge. The French landscape philosopher Sébastien Moreau had described this uh, position where the program is developed through the site as suburbanism. This rhetorical figure counteracts what Moreau calls superurbanism where the site is reduced to a neutral surface on which a predetermined and preconceptualized program can take place. Neither suburbanism or superurbanism exist in the pure form, but they help us understand relation, the relation between site and program. And this means that the development of the program is an integrated <coughs> part of the design process. It is part of the process of exchange between site survey and concept development. The relations between the survey, the program and the concept are developed through mutual exchange and in relation to the increasing knowledge being produced at the same time and the testing out of various uh, hypotheses. 
through the design process an appropriate and balanced relation between the answers to what, why and how is looked for. In an dialogous oriented approach, the program is developed along with the processing. This interaction based um, design approach um, uh, is based on testing out hypotheses. How does this and that work and what new interventions are called for when doing uh, this? And it's an ongoing process where site and design functions as its other correctives. The site-specific approach make it difficult to impose other visions than those that might relate to the site and work in a multiple system of order, and hence according to ambiguous and inclusive values. The existing complexity may not be reduced to a question of the unfolding of a unique vision, or even less to a question of style or producing something new out of context. Instead, we're talking of an approach with values, which value is depending on the understanding of the site's multiple aspects and the capacity to choreograph their coexistence. There's another thing to the programmatic aspect of transformed ruinous industrial landscapes, which we also see within landscape architecture on a more general, general level, but seldom within architecture and urban design. And that is that the program is quite open. We call it soft programming when the program functions as a frame, an occasion both perceptually and interpretative, stimulating and inviting. And this approach relies on the user's engagement, involvement and ability of appropriation, both as a temporal event and as a more permanent uh, physical uh, appropriation. The character of intervention covers the whole range from removal of existing parts and additional to new elements to more susceptible approaches to the appropriation of the as found. It is within the latter group that we find multiple practices linked to adjustment, maintenance, reparation, restoration, regeneration, um, etc. Um, I can see that time is running a bit, so I'll try to sort of catch shorten these things up in order to get to, um, to the strategy parts. But the point of listing all these um, issues uh, next to each other is that they have roots in, in various practices. Um, we restoration is uh, focusing on something that is of value and mainly looking backwards. Some are uh, attached to uh, horticultural um, uh, things. We are talking ab about a pragmatic um, approach when we talk about reuse because, because it could be thrown away and replaced by something new. So it's a complete uh, uh, huge range of approaches uh, that are uh, present and, and used um, quite next to each other. We see time as a resource uh, both as a room for uh, for memory, um, but also as um, a part of a reflexive uh, practice where you um, measure on the uh, outcome of the first interventions in order to decide on what should become next. And you, uh, you uh, design for uh, various uh, scenarios. And that also means um, that it implies another mm, appreciation of, um, of uh, time-related uh, aesthetics. Um, both decay and succession um, are definitely playing a new role. Um, intervention also reframes the questions about um, renewing another way that traditional design. Um, um, <coughs> which implicit build upon the originality worship that since the medieval and renaissance times has dominated with increasing power until actually uh, uh, last century. And the idea of the genius as a person who ex nihilo can invent something completely new and hitherto unseen does not make sense here. This calls for another kind of, of uh, intervention about finding and composing of what is already there and producing uh, statements uh, from that point of view. Okay, that's fine. 
Um, as stated in the beginning, we assume a connection between the reading and the editing, and hence between the reading strategies and editing strategies. And we have a lot of uh, references uh, on that uh, part. Um, and it all comes to, to uh, the diagram um, uh, thinking, which is a picture of visual expression which allows us to gather, represent and organize various kinds of data. And the architectural drawing is also a diagram. <coughs> And it shows modes, um, and it can both be stable and an and agent of exchange. So what is my point of view here is that we can think of it in a very positivistic sense that we go from the reading to the editing, but we could also uh, put it upside down and start looking at what are the uh, editing strategies, and from there get an idea of what is appreciated and what is evaluated. So my point of view is that we have a system of reference which is the existing, and we have a set of defined parameters, and I'll get back to the parameters. And then we can negotiate what takes plain place in this uh, exchange between those two systems. So what I have been done doing is that I have um, looked at a lot of um, uh, transformed uh, industrial areas and try to figure out what are the architectural strategies, what are the means for, for, uh, for transforming these areas. And um, I have, from this group, I had divided into three categories. And I'll just give you an overview of these uh, categories um, in order to sort of give you an idea what what is uh, a state. In the physical organization has a relation to order, <coughs> no matter if we are talking about order or disorder, so to speak. And it also touches upon the relation between part and whole, between constraints and freedom, between systems and the room for variation. The material of physical organization strategies focus uh, on models for interventions with does not relate to style. And um, they, of course, also change the meaning and vice versa with the material uh, strategies. Uh, they are, of course, have their root in changing uh, meaning, changing atmospheres and the perception of, of, uh, of these sites, but they are doing through the means of physical. Intervention. So, of course, they are very uh, related, but so the idea of putting them into these categories is to sort of um, try to figure out how to sort of define, define the main entrance to it. For instance, this void solid strategy uh, we see here in Shiphole, where they put on trees all over the place in order to create a huge solid. From there, you cut out. Um, uh, open space, you cut out voids, and that is a way of creating uh, an, 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 an order by, um, by, um, by means of, of a very simple system. It's the same system that we see in, in the, the project for the Melong Sinar uh, by OMR, where you have this basic order about the solid that can be constituted by buildings and trees, etc., and then you have the unbuilt spaces. We see other projects where the main intervention strategy is uh, is headed towards uh, uh, the the profile of of the earth, and then you can sort of change it around and use it as a as a reading strategy. Or we see a set of strategies which deals with superimposition, where you put on a system on top uh, without um, um, putting anything aside that is already there, sort of a transparent system, um, which we also find in this project by Enric Miralles, where you still are able to read what is already there through the uh, structures that you superimpose. Within this... Uh, box of, of immaterial strategies. You see um, 
values you see, uh, strategies that are linked to uh, uh, picture references, you see them as um, um, with allegories that you know that you have this system of communication that you use as a as a means for for transformation and finally in this category we have the flux uh, strategies where you on the one hand can say that we will not do anything we will let things grow a a fair strategy or you can try to regenerate nature's own strategies or you can um, introduce a cultivation strategy setting in something that supports um, supports the processes and of course is in this complex between uh, physical interventions and and interventions in in the meanings and the readings of these places so what we see is a, a complex um, of of uh, of methods that we really sort of take from a lot of various places. I try to describe it with the ECROS and the Dallas uh, um, pair. And we have these active diagrams that we, we constantly uh, return to. This whole uh, question about how you actually uh, um, constitute your representation uh, of what you, uh, uh, you have interests. We are talking about this uh, complexity of orders that dealing with this kind of sites, we have to find ways to handle multiple orders at the same time. And all these are to be seen as something ongoing. It's open work and that questions the uh, role of the architect as having the main authorship. And then there's this whole uh, request for newness which has been uh, dominating for a uh, several hundreds of years, where we now see a request for innovation as something different. So, my final remark would be that uh, despite these problems and uh, hurdles, we do have a lot of uh, interesting and stimulating and enriching um, interventions. And um, I think the main thing is to to think of architecture as something that is an ongoing thing um, in which we can add and uh, have a dialogue. And thank you for listening, even though it became a little longer than expected. Okay. <laughs>